you know what's you know what's going on there is that when we say Hashem Yimloch Olam Ba'ed, may God rule forever and ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it up to you? God does not rule forever and ever. I, I, I have to say, may God rule forever and ever. What does that mean? Right. So I think the same question occurs when you say Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you, God. Right. We have to bless God. We can say thank you, God, but we can say bless you, God. Mm-hmm. Usually, God blesses me. I am blessing God. What is the meaning of that? So everybody asks that question. That's a big philosophical question. So it looks, maybe that's what he's going to approach is when they said, Hashem, you look, blah, 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 that seems presumptuous. Mm-hmm. Like our brachot that seem presumptuous. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. So that's another one. Um, what did God reveal among the mitzvot in Mara, you know, when the bitter waters were sweetened, it says, Sham, Sham, Sam, Lo, Chok, Mishpat. There he gave the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, Chok, Mishpat, mm-hmm. uh, statutes and judgments. Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, what judgments are we talking about? There's a discussion about that between Rashi and, and the Ramban, conflict about it. And why was it necessary to precede Har Sinai, which is going to come soon, and give, him, give them commandments now. Why not? And what were they? Yeah? Um, what does the Torah mean when it says that you should listen to God's voice and do that which is yashar v'tov? Do that which is straight and good. I mean, we have mitzvot. What does it mean to say you should do what's straight and what's good? Well, usually what people say, you tell me what's straight and good by telling me what the Torah says to do. I mean, do I have to, uh, is there something besides the Torah about straight and good? The Ramban is discussing that because the Torah says that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was the test of the man, of the man walking in the desert without food? Um, Why was um, <coughs> what was the reason for for Moshe praying a great, great, long prayer at the time of the war with Amalek? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Nunu. So you heard a few suggestions. What was it, sir, that you would suggest? Uh, me, what is it? Uh, Mara, they say that Mara. Mara about the. The ki- the, what are the commandments at Mara and why? You, you interested in that? It's an interesting problem, and there is a conflict there. Mm-hmm. So we are talking about verse 25 in chapter 15. Chapter 1, 5, verse 26, sorry. Mm-hmm. 25, yeah. 26. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Find 25. And it happens to be in our version of the Ramban <coughs> of Shin Nun Tet. So it goes like this. You see that the Ramban there? Yeah? So at the end, when he sweetened the water, you want to read us the verse uh, 25? There he established for the nation a decree and Tested it, meaning it, the nation. Tested that. The nation. Yeah, not the test of the water. Not the water. Not the water. <laughs> no. um, all right. So, what is the what is say judgment? Test them. It should have been tested, but some, because the whole word is it. Uh, talking about the nation as a 
single individual. Shan Sam Lo. Kokum Sahu, a single individual almost. Tested him, tested, tested the nation. Okay, the group. Anyway, okay, so now we're listening to our mind. Sam Sham Lo Kokum Sam Sahu, you got it? The Maran Atan Lahem Miksat Parshiot Shel Torashi Taskubahem. Shabbat para aduma bedini. Very, this, he's quoting Rashi, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay? That in the beginning he gave them uh, a few of the uh, sections of the Torah that they shall make themselves busy, busy with them. One of them is Shabbat, which is sort of maybe understandable. If you were going to start the people off, you know, give them an introduction to the Torah, give them a little bit of a prelude to the Torah, then Shabbos is not bad, right? But then look, what Rashi said, another one is para aduma. Yeah, para aduma. Right. A little bit odd, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's one of the most difficult, impossible to understand, number one. Number two, it has no application at this time. At this time. Because they have to be tame and tahor, which only comes about in the mitzvot regarding the Mishkan, which is going to be quite a while. Mm -hmm. Um... A little bit interesting, right? Mm -hmm. That Rashi would get that. He, and this is, by the way, he didn't make this up. Mm -hmm. He's picking this up, I think, from a Gemara somewhere. Vedinim. Dinim is also something a little bit reasonable. Dinim are judgments, criminal, criminal judgments and civil law, you know, how to judge between one person and another. You steal something, what's happened to you, or you have to pay twice as much. Or, you know, dinim, dinim is a general civil law. Yeah? So Shabbat and Dinim are sort of understandable, right? Okay. Because we're going to start the people off mm -hmm. behaving in a way that's going to get them ready for Torah, but the uh, is a little hard. Well, okay, that, Lashon that, Rashi. That tells me that there's a, a mystery. There's mystery in, the, in the Yeah, why this one? I understand. You want that the Torah shall be con understood by them that it's not all going to be understandable. We are going to give you laws that are far out as well. All right, so choose that one as one of the examples. Mm -hmm. huh? That they should be ready for that. Uh, oh. Good again. How about, how about another possibility? Why would he give him Mata Paraduma? How about another possibility that he was expecting, if you remember, to dwell among them once the Torah was given? The only reason that the Mishkan was given late a year later is because of the Egel, right? According to the Ramban, well, this will hangs, this hangs up according to the, whether there's a Machok is about that with Rashi as well. When did God intend, when did God give them the commandment to make the Mishkan? Right? How did God? It was after the Egel, it was after the Egel, after he forgave them, and after the second commandments were given on Yom Kippur, then as Moshe comes down, he says, okay, we're going to get, make the Mishkan, right? So, so if, the we have, if we have no sin with the ego, if we... That's the question. That is the question. Is, I'm saying, every, everyone poses this problem. Is the Mishkan a mitzvah that happened after they failed and after they sinned and after they were forgiven? Meaning... Meaning that without the sin, they would not have a mishkan? Unlikely. Or, meaning they would not have a mishkan because, I mean, you would have to say because God would be with them even without a mishkan. You know, it would be like everywhere. Uh, like everywhere, all the time with them. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. Just the other way of looking at it is, <coughs> no, 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 Hashem intended to give them a mishkan right away. And that was part of the plan, even on the first Hasarat that he birthed. But, but there was a divorce. There was almost a divorce. There was almost, a, you know, there was a cancel plans. We don't make a Mishkan. You know, Mishkan was sort of like getting married, going into the Chuppah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So first comes the Matan Torah, and then you're going into the Chuppah, we're going to live together in the Mishkan. Mishkan is going to be in the midst of the people. Comes the Egel, cancel. Forget about it, we're not going to make the Mishkan. Slowly, repentance, and 
tefillah and so on and so on, and then forgiveness, and then the second aseret that he brought, and then Moshe comes to the people and saying, okay, we're back to, to the first plan, yeah, back to the original plan. Moshe said that the Mishkan was raising the people to the level of the other. Moshe said. Yeah. And Rabban said that. Oh, not Moshe. Right. I, I don't know that Moshe said that. But the, uh, yeah. No, the Avos didn't have a Mishkan. Uh, I'm okay, not sure exactly what that the, means. The, the Hashem is with the people. Yeah, Hashem will be with the people. So, I mean, the question is, but, but everywhere, an anti, everywhere, every place anti, antinomial went. person would say, God is with the people because he chose them and they get married uh, without him. I mean, I, I, I'm not arguing with you. I'm saying it's not, it's it's not a... a it's I said, I said, I'm, like, this is I, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. The, the Ramban thinks that the Mishkan was the original idea. That was the culmination, the climax of the un union of the people with God. That is, okay, coming home to God. So you're making a home with God. So just like you get married, you bring your wife into your house. Hashem brings the people to Mishkan, right? I mean, people, people who bring God into Mishkan, whatever, right? And that was the original plan. Failed, and then, okay, we forgive you, and we're going to get married anyway. Right? It was just an engagement, almost, almost canceled the engagement. Mm -hmm. between the Kala and the Chatan. Mm -hmm. So, if it's true that the plan was for a Mishkan right away, then maybe that's why Moshe would give the people a taste of how to behave with this upcoming Mishkan through the Parah Duma. There will be issues of Tuma and Tahara, and so we might as well get people used to the idea of how to behave that way. I'm just making it up. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. as an introduction. Because one month from now, they're going to be Getting the Torah. Right. Okay. Visham Nisabu, and by the way, Rashi also is worried, <coughs> worried about your problem about testing it. So he's saying testing it, meaning the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, testing them. So exactly what does it mean, testing? We're not sure, yeah? Vidat Rabotenu, and Rashi is quoting somebody, 43, where is it? Sanhedrin. It's in the uh, tractate of Sanhedrin and the Mechilta. And so on. Okay. Vani Tama, and I wonder, the Ramban says, Lamalo Pirash Khan Hachukim Ha'elev Amishpatim. Right? Why doesn't God now enumerate? If it's true that He gave Him commandments about what to do with certain laws, why doesn't it usually, like in the Torah, usually it says, Vayidaber, Vayomer, Vayidaber Hashem and Moshe, Tzavit Bnei Israel, Kashir Amarti. Amar the parshiot and iskrot v'mala dabru el kol adat bnei Israel and so on. Every time the, the Torah talks about a commandment, it you you see it in the psukim. The psukim says, and God spoke to Moshe, say, tell the people of Israel to do the following thing, right? And here, it doesn't say that. Here, it just says in a very very unclear way. Here, he gave them, or put before them, chok u'mishpat. And they're testing that. Well, doesn't this, enumerate. Well, this is supposed to be giving. Chok could be paraduma. Yeah, but but not to enumerate. What are, there are a lot of chukim, like basar v'dam and doza v'chalaf. I mean, what, it, uh, why not specify? Like every time you have a mitzvah, the, the Torah specifies it. You don't have to interpret. You have to, you, it, it says so what it is, right? And you see this in all the mitzvot where which were given to Moshe in their desert travel as well, right? That the mitzvah is enumerated, it's clear. The Lashon Rashi she'amar pashiyot she'istasku bahem, and when Rashi says <coughs> these mitzvot are those which they shall become busy with, mashma sh'odiyah machukim ahem, v'limei l'tam atid ha'kadosh v'achu v'tzavot etchem b'kach al ha'derech sh'limei l'Abraham avinu t'atorah, According to Rashi, right, he, he gave them these mitzvot, and he told them that in the future he will enumerate and explain these things to command them about the way that they will behave, just like Abraham learned the Torah before it was given, meaning he 
intuitive, the Torah that Yehoah was given. The, and this was in order to make them accustomed in mitzvot and to know whether they will accept him in a good, in, with a good heart. And that's what he means by, by testing. If I tell you before we go to give you any commandments, I want to tell you that we're going to enter into a relation and there's going to be a lot of commandments I will expect from you. I want to know if you're ready. Like so going to the test. yeshiva and make an exam or something? No, I'm going, going to, to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you a few things, but I want to tell you that in the future you're going to have a lot of laws. And I want to know if you're ready for that. <laughs> Are you ready to accept this future relationship in which you have a lot of laws, a lot of mitzvot? For the Yam Shehod Yitzhabel B'mitzvot. And he's telling them that in the future he will command them many commandments. Mm-hmm. That next phrase, he said to them, if you will listen to God's voice and, com- and follow all his commandments, that he will, fo- that he will command you, right? So that seems to be what Rashi says, that he is not really giving them the details of the mitzvot. When he says chukim, he means, I guess, a statement that there will be a lot of laws. Not the specific laws. You know, you wanted to know, you wanted to know how come Rashi, Ramban asks the question, how come if the Torah gave the laws now, why didn't he tell them the laws and specify so his answer, according to Rashi, is that he didn't really give them the, in the dinim the specific ones. He told them that there will be a lot of laws, and that's what he meant by testing them, because he wanted to know, are you ready to enter this relationship where you have a lot of laws? Not that he gave them the specific laws. But, uh, what the, about the Shabbat and the Chukim and, and Paratuma? He doesn't address, right? But what about the, the first commandment that Hashem gave us in, in, in Egypt? What's that? Related with the, the thing that will happen at that moment. What? The, the Seder, for example. Pesach. Pesach. That because was specified in the Yeah, exactly. But right. it was only for them. And at, at this moment, why here? There is no circumstance. There is no moment to <coughs> Paraduma. Well, Paraduma, we don't. He's not discussing Paraduma. He's talking about Chukim, Dinim. Right? Dinim are a group of laws. So instead of saying which laws, he's telling them that I'm going to give you a lot of laws. Your part, I said this, Paraduma is not answering. He's not, he's not discussing that because that is strange, right? How are they going to keep themselves busy with Paraduma? Mm-hmm. Right now, the Ramban suggests a different answer. Valderich Hapshat, Kasher Echel Lavoba Midbar Adol. He's saying like this. You want to read? I mean, I, I don't know. Because if I read in Hebrew, I have to translate everything. You want to read in English? Um, <coughs> according to the plain understanding, right? But according to the plain way of interpretation, when the Israelites began, began entering the great and awesome wilderness and thirst, thirst where there was no water, he established for the nation practices for them to follow regarding their liber- uh, li- livelihood. Mm. Livelihood. Livelihood. <laughs> and general necessities uh, which they should follow until their arrival to the inhabited land in Eretz Israel. For any set practices, practice is called uh, Chok. Chok. That's, that's, that's called the law, right? Yeah. Kinyan as in allot me my daily bread. Means, you know, my, my daily allowance is like a law. It's almost like a leave of things. Chukot shamayim va'aretz. The normal ongoing behavior, right? Mm-hmm. The, the habits or the, the way the heavens work. And He's as quoting him, had I not set up the fixed patterns of heaven and earth, a practice is called, is called uh, mishafat. Mishpat. Mishpat. Um, mishpat. Judgment. As well, an account of this being carefully measured according to what is appropriate to the situation as civil, lo- civil laws. Um, and so we find the following verses. Uh, this is what David did, and this has been his practice all the days. His practice means mishpato, mishpato. the things that he always did, his habitual ongoing behavior, right? 
כמשפט הראשון, go ahead. Um, as was the former practice when you were his cup bearer, right? Meaning like the customary practice and the palace will assume its proper place to the mind. Okay, so there are many tukim, he's just quoting many tukim in which mishpat, 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 which usually means a specific law, can also mean an ongoing usual practice. Not a law, not usual, right? When, he, when Yosef says to the cupbearer of, of uh, Paro, you will go back to your mishpat as you has done before. Mishpat means his habitual job, oh. the job that he was doing. So mishpat is uh, like a, a regular, a regular ongoing event or behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So, so one, one. So before that we go on, he's always oh, next, right? Maybe. He said, so his first suggestion is, Hashem did not command them Shabbat, and he did not command them Paraduma, and he did not command them specific laws. What did he do? They're going into a place which is dangerous and hard and no water and awesome and dangerous and frightening place, right? And they're about to enter, right? So Moshe, Moshe spoke to the people and said, listen, nobody's going to drink too much water. You have to drink only a quart a day. You have to do rations, right? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be careful of... Uh, um, the, um, the, the way that you walk in the sun, you have to put on a sunscreen every day because you might get uh, burned and get, sun and get skin cancer, right? And at night, everybody has to cover up because it gets cold in the, the desert. I want to teach you habitual behavior that is going to be necessary in this, in this difficult place. That's what he meant by mishpat and chok, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. With these, these regulations about the way they should behave in general in this difficult place. Who, who, what's the subject of the sentence? Shem, Sam, Lob. According to the Rashi, it's Shem. Yes. Okay, and what does the Pasuk say? Shem, Sam, Lob, No, what does that, what does the Pasuk say? Wait a second. He says, Vayitzake l'ashem, vayoreu Hashem eitz. Right? He called out to God. And Hashem shows him a tree. A, a piece of wood. A piece of wood. Vayashlech alamayim. Who is Vayashlech? Who threw it into the water? Moshe. Moshe. And the waters became sweet. Sham, Sam Lo, there he put before them Choko Mishpat, Vesham Nisahu, and there he tested them. What, who? What, how, do you, how do you know it's Hashem? What, there are two pronouns here. There are two subjects. Biggie. He, he, Moshe, mm -hmm. called out to God. Mm -hmm. And he, Hashem, mm -hmm. showed him a piece of wood. And he, Moshe, threw it into the water. Mm -hmm. and, he, and the waters became sweet. It, the water, <laughs> became sweet. That's, not, that's neither God nor Moshe, right? And there he, he, who, no, you don't know. You don't know who he. There he put before them chok and mishpat. So if you and there he tested them. So if you want to say the first reason of the Ramban is there he, the leader, <coughs> the leader Moshe, he says, okay guys, the water is sweet now. Now you can drink. But I want you to know there's not going to be much water from now on. We're going into the desert. Listen to me. We have to behave in this and this and this way between now and the time we come to Eretz Israel because otherwise we're going to die. Right? So you listen to me. I've got some things I have to teach you. Here's the Choko Mishpat in living in the desert. You want to survive in the desert? You have to know these Chukim and Mishpatim. Meaning, ongoing day, the Bedouins know, right? That's how you survive. If you and I would walk through this desert, we would die after two days, three days. But Bedouins can live in this desert. Why? Because they know, right? And I, Moshe, I want to tell you that I ran away from Mitzrayim once. Right. And I ran away for years and years and years until I survived enough that I got married in uh, Yitro's house and I came back. Listen to me. I'm going to give you some laws now about how to behave in this desert. So according to this reasoning, it's just, a, I'm just telling you, what the, I'm, I'm not uh, suggesting we have to make a choice, but the Ramban's first answer suggests Choko Mishpat here is a figure of speech 
to talk about the usual habits that we have to follow from now on. I don't do it's mitzvot of the Torah. Right. To stay alive, to do the right thing. I mean, but uh, it's, it's, it's just that Hashem is giving you a, 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 a nace. A, a so what? He also did a nace of Kriyat Yam Suf. He did a nace of Makat uh, So he, he, They were thirsty. They cried out to God. And they said, why did you bring us here to die in the desert? No, and they, and they, they cried. And they cried. They cried and right? Fire, right? Moshe. They, they complained to Moshe, saying, what shall we drink? So he calls out to God, and God shows him how to sweeten the water, and, and they sweetened. I mean, what, what's the problem? Why should it be now? See, the Ramban's problem is, if it's God speaking to Moshe, telling him to tell them laws, his first question was, why doesn't it say, by the bear Hashem and Moshe le mor, the bear of Bnei Israel, and you should put tzitzis every morning, and you should tell him, da, 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 and this is what you should do. And this, I mean, that, that's the usual way the Torah goes. It, the Torah doesn't ever give you mitzvot without saying that Moshe was commanded to give this mitzvot. Don't say anything. Yeah, the Torah wasn't given to Right. But, but he says in Mitzrayim it was given that way. Yes. Hashem says to Moshe, go and talk to the Zikne Israel and Bnei Israel. This is what they should do. We have a model. We have a model already. Mm -hmm. About chametz and about the Korban mm -hmm. Pesach and about what to do. And, and that's the way it's described. So specifying, like specifying from what, the, from, from what God did. So he's got a textual problem with the way the sentence is structured. So the one answer is, okay, this is Moshe putting out the, the laws of survival. Here. This is what we're going to do. Okay, one. Mm -hmm. This is first suggest, right? Oh, did you get the next paragraph? Oh, maybe also, possibly. I don't know. I, I fouled it up, huh? Yeah, somewhere. Oh, meaning or. Are you, are you are there? Seem, seem similar this next one. Alternatively, Moses instructed them to throw out the realities of life in the wilderness. That's it? Yeah, yes. go ahead. To endure hunger and thirst, and to call out in their hunger and thirst to God, in the manner of supplication, not in the manner of complaint. In addition, he gave them ordinances. One second, one second, one second. Keep going. yeah, yeah ordinances by which they would they would live there in the wilderness. Namely, to, for example, that each person love his fellow man and conduct himself in accord with the counsel of the elders, that they should 